Next up, uh, the next session dives deep into the world of Linux. And it's a very intriguing topic as well. In, uh, immutable Linux systems and how they work. And we have Rudra Saraswat with us. He wears multiple hats. He is a Ubuntu release manager uh, for Ubuntu Unity and a Ubuntu member as well. And he leads the project of Ubuntu Unity, Unity 7. Apart from that, he is also creative mind behind Blend OS, Ubuntu Web, uh, Gabe, Ubuntu, and Una. And he also uh, maintains uh, several other Linux uh, projects. So please welcome Rudra Saraswat on the stage and over to you. Thank you. Hey everyone, uh, nice to be here. Um, so in this session, in this session, I will be speaking about immutable Linux systems and how they work. To kick it all off, um, let's just discuss what immutability is. An immutable Linux system, in simple terms, is one that has a read-only file system. It is possible to use such a system as a daily driver with the advent of containerized applications in the last decade. As for atomicity, if you're not already familiar with it, an atomic operation is one that is composed of several, uh, an atomic transaction is one that is composed of several operations that all happen at the same time. And there's no state where they have partially been completed. This is crucial on Linux systems, um, as you do not want to end up with a broken system after an update because a package installation may have failed and you end up with half of the files having been installed to your root file system. So let us discuss some implementations of immutability on Linux used by some of the prominent immutable distributions out there. I will not be discussing NixOS in the session as even though it is quite a popular immutable distribution, from what I know, the main focus is reproducibility. And therefore, it is out of scope for the session. The first implementation I'll be looking at, APU, is used by vanilla OS, Pika OS, and quite a few other distributions. It uses two partitions, an A, B, an a root partition and a B partition, as the name tells. The A partition, so, um, so any updates you run, any updates you trigger manually, they run in the B partition. So if an update was successful, the update in the B partition, so the B partition is merged with the A partition on the next boot. And that is how atomicity is implemented in AB root. Then as for libOST, libOST is also used by many distributions, such as Fedora, Silverblue, GNOME OS, Endless OS, just to name a few. libOST, or in the words of the team, in the words of the libOST team themselves, it is sort of like a VCS, a version control system, but for operating systems. That is, it has commits, for example, except those are just snapshots of the file system T. Similarly, there are references which are akin to branches. Then, let us come to the implementation uh, that the operating system I develop uses, Blend OS users, etc. To understand why we do not go for any of the other implementations out there, AP root or OST, let us discuss the first original implementation used by BlendOS before Akshara. It used file attributes for immutability. That is, it would set the i bit and files individually under the user directory, which was not that great of an implementation if you're familiar with attributes, and it used some code for SnapD for this. This also meant that it lacked support for atomic updates and it required immutability to be toggled or disabled before updates using Pac-Man. And this also slowed down boots, uh, since it will have to toggle the immutability bit on files in parallel on boot using a systemd service. So that slowed down your system in the first few minutes, so it will have to use all of the threads available on your system, all of the cores available. So we looked into other alternatives for the implementation. And we eventually came up with the idea of using OverlayFS for implementing immutability and atomic updates. And we named our implementation Akshara. If you do not know, OverlayFS is an implementation of overlaid file systems on Linux. 
so it allows you to overlay one file system on top of another. So this allows us to have a single partition with just the user directory immutable. And that is one advantage of our implementations that we have a single partition. You do not need multiple partitions. And this was one of the reasons we did not go for AP root initially. It requires two 20 GB root partitions. So that requires a lot of space, 40 GBs, and then any files in your home directory, they need space too, of course. So this allows us to use a single partition. It also allows us to implement atomic updates with a single partition, which I'll be coming to later. And it allows us to install system packages without having to disable immutability, as we can simply install any system packages simply with Pac-Man to to another user overlay. So we can generate another user overlay using, uh, using the system root file system as a base or lower directory. And this is how we install system packages, regular system packages like on Arch to blend OS without having to disable immutability. As for atomic updates, we, unlike other implementations, just use installation ISOs as images, as system images for updates. This is unlike other implementations, of course, and we came up with this idea because we did not want to have to, you know, we did not want to have to have separate update images aside from the main ISOs themselves. As ISOs contain SquareFS images, which contain root file systems in themselves. And this is how an installer installs, installs an operating system to your, to your main test, to your main partition. So we simply extract the partitions from inside the ISO. We extract the squash FS. So we mount it and then copy all the files over to the main root file system and generate a new root file system for bootstrapping the updated system. We then regenerate any, we then regenerate any overlays um, using any of the packages you may have installed previously. And on the next boot, we replace your current root file system with a new one using an instant FS hook. And any time of this hook is a shell script which is run before, before any of the root partitions or any other partitions are mounted. It is run, whenever, it is run once the inner time of this is loaded and the inner script is run. And yeah, that is before uh, the main partition is loaded. And we swap, out the, we swap out the user directory with the new one. And this takes a total of zero seconds, of course, because, um, because it's a simple rename operation. And therefore, it allows us to implement our Im atomic updates in Plant OS using Akshara. To conclude the session, I feel immutable distributions are the way to go for Linux. It helps us avoid dependency hell, aka the phenomenon where you have two where you have a package, uh, the new version of a package depending on another version of a package that is to be updated, and this results in a whole bunch of conflicts. So this is what we know as dependency hell, and it helps us avoid that. Secondly, this also contributes to the use of friendliness of your system. And it also, and quality free implementations are a lot more flexible than traditional distributions. They allow you to declare your system using configuration files. Thank you for attending this session. Let me know if you have any questions. So I had a really small doubt. Uh, so you said, yeah, okay. Uh, so you said uh, there will be layered file system. Uh, will the layered file systems, right? So would that be a performance hit in any case? Uh, uh, would that be? Uh, could you just repeat that bit again? Yeah. Uh, would there be any performance hit or like uh, uh, degradation in? Oh uh, no, overlay FS is quite performant, and besides, this is only for system files. So uh, no, there should not be any performance hit. Okay. Thank you. All right. Hi, um, quick question over here. Uh, so you mentioned that NixOS is out of scope, and you also mentioned that that focuses on reproducibility, and this is just about immutability. So I mean, reproducibility seems like a very natural next step after immutability, right? So can you explain or elaborate why uh, the systems that you are using or mentioned over here are compared would not lead to some reproducible system, or in, wo in what cases it wouldn't? Um, so I could you repeat that last bit? In oh. like so, the things that you compared over here, in what cases would they not lead to a reproducible system? 
Um, if you're just a regular user, um, you know, if you do not want to, um, because the producibility is usually, um, you know, when you want to have an exact copy of the system, you know, with the same versions of the packages and all. So, um, you know, if you're a regular user who does not care about that, I mean, yeah, that is one thing, but yeah. So, um, yeah, like you mentioned, uh, most implementations do allow for the producibility, like Akshara and others are the producible. You know, after an installation or updates, you end up with the same exact system. But, yep. Yeah.